here we were, and I had been trained by the Vancouver Fire Department. I had driven ambulance in Vancouver um, for Kingsway Ambulance, which has since blown up and long gone. Um, so I did know a bit about the ambulance service and firefighting. When I got here, I didn't tell a soul, not a soul. And one day I met this guy by the name of Roe Mercer, and he said, uh, how would you like to join the volunteer fire department? I said, oh no, no that's too dangerous for me. Okay, just thought I would ask. Well, this went on for about three years. And then my training officer from Vancouver came to Pemberton looking for me. And uh, he bumped into Roe at the hotel. That's where he met everybody. And uh, he said, oh yeah, he says, I trained him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, he said, I was his captain at hall number nine. Oh yeah. Of course, Rose lit up like a candle, you know. He said, oh boy, there's new blood. So he went to the mayor, which then was Ben Cherry. And Ben Cherry met me the next day, and I said hi to him, kept walking. And he said, oh, by the way. And I said, uh, what? He said, uh, we're looking for a fire chief. Can you take over the fire department? I said, no, no, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and he said, well, that's not what I'm led to believe, he said. And I, he told me about Roe meeting this guy. And I said, well, let me think about it. So I took a month and thought about it. Next thing you know, I was there. <laughs> so I went down and I looked in the fire hall and I thought, oh, Shit, what kind of crap is this? <laughs> there was an old beat up truck with no roof on it, and they told me the temperature went down to minus 30. And I thought, you oh, can't drive that. There's no snow tires on, there's nothing, there's junk. And there was another van there that all this junk came out of. <laughs> yeah. um, and I believe that they attempted to do one trip as an ambulance. Yeah. And I think it broke down on Suicide Hill. <laughs> so I looked at that and I thought, no, I can't do that. So, um, I thought, well, we've got to get going on this. We've got to, got to buy equipment. So Ben Cherry said, well, how much are you looking at? And I said, oh, I don't know, 100,000, 150,000. <laughs> I said, that's a good start. And uh, they came up with a bit of money, about 20%. Told me to go ahead and spend it. You know, you know, taxi trip to Vancouver was 20% in those days, so I couldn't do much. But as time progressed, um, we got rid of the old van. So anyway, we bought a, we ordered a truck. Uh, it was a '71. In '71, we ordered a brand new Ford, and uh, then we got rid of that other piece and. All of a sudden, there was pressure put on me to do this and do that and do that. And I thought, well, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I incorporated the fire department with uh, search and rescue. Um, we started up search and rescue in, in the 70s. And we bought another new truck in. Then all of a sudden we had one truck too many, so we had to add on to the fire hall. <laughs> and then a few years later we had another truck too many, so we had to add another bay on the fire hall. And I see now they just added another bay. <laughs> so it progressed as time went along, and all of a sudden more and more people were coming into Pemberton. And uh, we got more and more calls, and pretty soon it was vehicle accident. Well, we need a rescue vehicle. Well, we ended up getting a rescue vehicle, and then all of a sudden it was water accidents. So we bought a 20-foot a Zodiac, and then uh, they thought I was spending too much money. And I said, well, you know, if you're going to give the service, you've got to spend money. So I decided that we needed a vehicle for search and rescue, but the village didn't want to give me any, so I got hold of BC Tal and told them about all their workmen that were going to drown because we couldn't get to them because we had no vehicle. Well, BC Tal came out with a vehicle. It 
it's the biggest disaster I ever got involved in. And <laughs> I spent six nights at the fire hall without any sleep, working day and night. Mm -hmm. And when I finally went to sleep, it was under the pool table in the fire hall. <laughs> you know, because I couldn't get home. There was still water everywhere. But a meager mountain again. And it had fallen down, and there was a lake up there loaded with water, and all the water came down. A block? No, right here. Right out here we had water. That was uh, six feet deep at the drive-in. Yeah, anyway, that, that was a, a hell of a mess. And, and I had incorporated search and rescue into the fire department with the plan of down the road separating it because I didn't want all my manpower out on a mountain somewhere while I got a three-alarm fire going in Pemberton. And uh, we hadn't quite got to that point. And then uh, Shirley Henry, uh, when she was mayor, decided that I was going to be the emergency coordinator. Well, I had written a village plan and I had just finished written it a week before the flood. Mm -hmm. And I was still issuing copies to the different people that were taking parts in the flood. And it worked out very well, but there's a few things I'd forgotten about. And it sure screwed me up. Um, people that were evacuating were bringing all their animals to the fire. <laughs> now, I had llamas, I had donkeys, I had cows, I had horses, I had cats, dogs, chickens, and they're all in the fire hall. And I tell you, that creates a lot of dung. <laughs> oh, it was unreal. And then we had uh, different things went on that just weren't copacetic, but it worked. We had one of my captains called in that he had a, a bull up on the mountain jammed against in between the tree and the mountain, and he was giving birth. <laughs> this time, I was groggy and didn't understand what's going on. I only knew, knew was that he needed the rescue vehicle and a hundred feet of rope. So I sent it to him. These guys are plowing in water four feet deep, but they made it and they got the bull out. And I said, after a while I woke up and I said, uh, Tom, how are you making out with that bull? Got her down. I said, since when do they have calves? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said, I was just kidding. And he said, I thought you were serious. And it kind of, you know, it jars you, these weird things happening. And we got the, we ended up with the, the record for the most helicopter usage of any disaster in BC. Wasn't that it? And we had helicopters all over the place. I had one for my captain, one for my deputy chief, a couple for the firefighters, a couple for the rescue guys. We all had helicopters. And the government was paying the bills, so we were quite happy about it. Unbelievable what was going on with that flood. Like all the houses were just loaded with water. Everything was being thrown out. Uh, fridges were going, Chesterfields were out in the front lawn, and hay was starting to catch fire. And Shirley contacted the military, and they sent up the military. A hundred and some odd guys, I think it was. Yeah, to work on the barn fires, because we didn't have time. We were too busy doing our other thing. And we had no police, so we had to act as police too to keep the looters out. And there were looters here. I delivered this little kid and we made it down to the hospital. Everything was fine. It's strange, but no doctor is capable of doing much out in the field because they're not trained for it. The ambulance crews are trained to do it. They'll go up and down the cliffs. They'll crawl into burning cars. They'll do this, that, and the other thing. But an MD won't. If the patient isn't laying there flat out on a white table with a white cloth, they're lost, totally lost. So we did all the work. In, in total, since I've been here, I held the provincial record for delivering babies. I did 69 babies with two sets of twins. And that's unheard of in the ambulance service. Nobody's beat my record yet and I've been retired from it for 10 years. So, um, I can remember one time I had a breech birth and the uh, woman's uh, 
The baby stuck his arm up. Well, nowhere in the ambulance history do they tell you what to do when an arm comes out. You can't grab the arm and pull the baby out, no. You know, and you can't push it back in if you hurt the arm. So I thought and thought about it, and I said to my driver, pull over here. And he pulled over, and I still wasn't sure what to do. And I thought, I know, he's coming out of a 98 degree temperature. So if I lower the degree by 20 or 30, I'll get him to turn around. But I didn't have anything that was that cool, but I did find a pop bottle under the seat of the ambulance. So I took the pop bottle, stuck it outside in the snow for about three minutes, got it nice and cold, and I had to brought it in and put it on his leg. No problem. Well, he went the yard. <laughs> Ten minutes later, he turned around and stuck his head out. So